turn in your Bible to Proverbs 31 and then hold your hand there and we'll turn over to Ruth and uh, just a little background here so you kind of catch where I'm going and we're going to go there quickly because of our time remember the Bible says honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth and uh and I know the old saying, and you've heard it. Uh, Mama told her children many times, I brought you into this world, I can take you out. <laughs> uh, even though my mom was a, more of a softy, and now Shirley's mom, my wife Shirley, her mom was not a softy. Her daddy was a softy. Uh, but my dad knew when you knew something was coming he was going to give it to you <laughs> my mom was one you know i might be able to talk out of some of those things and uh, so you know, uh, that's the way it was uh but uh in the bible here in, in proverbs uh it, it says there in verse 10 who can find a virtuous wife uh that word virtuous could be it's excellent in the nasb noble character in the NIV. Uh, so that same word is used to describe Ruth in the Old Testament. And, and that's in Pro Ruth 3.11. And we'll be there in just a minute real quick. And Jewish tradition is that King Lemuel 31.1, who wrote this, and that word means devoted to God. It's Solomon. In the Old Testament, Solomon was named Jedidiah. And you can see that in 2 Samuel 12, 25. His mama's name was Bathsheba. Remember, she lost the first one. And then her second son was Solomon. And then the Lord gave him the name Jedidiah. Beloved of God. Beloved of God. And so many believe that when the Proverbs 31 woman is actually a picture of Ruth in the Old Testament. And that's what a little comparison there. And we don't have time to do a long study on it. But we see, as I have, there are eight characteristics, uh, uh, character traits. And the number one was she was devoted. If you have the book of Ruth there, uh, I have mine a hand in one and a hand in the other. Devoted to her family. That's what we just heard about. A mother was devoted to her family. And in Proverbs, or Ruth 1, verses 14 and 15, uh, 15 uh, sorry, verse 15 through 18, and she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. This is her mother-in-law, Naomi, talking to them. Both of the husbands of, of her daughter-in-laws have died. Naomi's sons have died. And she's going back home because there had been a big famine. And now she's going back to her Jewish ancestry. And she's telling her daughter-in-law, Orpah was the one in verse 14 and this one to Ruth and she said look your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods return after your sister-in-law but Ruth said and treat me not to leave you or to turn back from you following after you for wherever you go I will go and wherever you lodge I will lodge your people shall be my people and your God my God where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death departs or parts you and me. When she said that she was determined to go where she goes, she stopped speaking to her. So she said, I'm going where you go, Naomi. That's her mother-in-law. But she is decking. You know, guess whose name she brought up? The Lord. Where did she hear about that? She's a pagan. <laughs> she heard of that from Naomi and hopefully from her, their husbands. And she says, wherever you go, I'm going. She was dedicated to her mother-in-law's family and to their mother-in-law's God. Proverbs 31, keep your hand in Ruth. 
verse 10, says this. Uh, we already read verse 10. Let's go down through 11 and 12. The heart of her husband safely trusts in her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. There we go, Tom. She's going to be a virtuous woman. She's going to take care of you all the days of your life. That's why she prayed for you. She sent you to work. And, uh, <laughs> and verse 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders at hand. She was devoted to her family. And we're not going to spend a lot of time there. She demonstrates impeccable loyalty to her husband and to her kids and her family. Number two, so I can get through this list, she delighted in her work. Uh, Ruth chapter 2, verse 2. So Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him, in whom sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. She says, she, she says Let me go out and take care of and getting some food coming in here for her mother in law. Glean the fields. Now, in Old Testament times, when they harvested their fields, they would leave the corners and the edges for the poor and needy. Uh, that was God's welfare plan in the Old Testament. Uh, you got to eat, but you had to go get it. <laughs> and that's, God had that plan. So she said, hey, let me go and uh, I'll glean some wheat or whatever happens to be the harvest and uh, so that we have something to eat. So she's going to take care of her mother-in-law. And she's not ready to work. It's not that it was easy. Uh, and then, of course, on God's sovereign plan, <laughs> she went and gleaned in guess who Boaz's field. Now, I don't know if you know, but Boaz and Ruth will later get married. This is a romance story. And guess who their sons will be? Obed, Jesse, David. Isn't that something? God's going to take and use this woman and she's going to be part of the godly line of Jesus Christ. And, and so it's part of your heritage, too. And uh, so in Proverbs 31, 13, it says this. Uh, she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. My mom's the hardest working woman. My, my wife would still tell you this day, the hardest working woman she ever knew. Man, she just even now at 87, almost 88. She does stuff that I tell her, Mom, let someone else do that. Now, she's doing a little better because her back's been hurting a little bit and, and her shoulders are hurting a little bit. She said, I guess it's because she's getting old. And uh, she has two knees replaced. And uh, like I said, it wasn't long enough to get those knees replaced. She's climbed on a ladder. She took the shutters down, painted them, washed all the windows, washed all around the edge of the house just a few weeks after, and then painted it all. When we were coming up for a family get together and uh, she's never been afraid of work. She was that way her whole life. And that's what from the generation that a lot of our mothers were from. They weren't used to the easy stuff, you know. And uh, I know that Marilyn used to remind me of that they used to have uh, places out here to park the horses. And she would come up before church and do what? Fire up the wood stove so they had heat. You know, we just flip the switch on. <laughs> Most of the time that works. And, and how easy we got it, but that wasn't always that easy, was it? And the thing of having credit and all that kind of stuff, but none of that stuff. They worked hard, saved their money, and, and bought what they bought, right? It was a, a different world. And, but anyhow, she delighted in her work. And then the next one, she was diligent in her labor. Chapter 2, verse 7 of Ruth says, And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. She's working from what? Daybreak to dust. Gathering grain so they have something to eat. And again, remember, that's what a lot of times, and there's still families that way, they work daily to have enough to what? To eat. You know, you had to take care of your family. And my mom ended up later in life. First, she was home because we had six kids, not eight girls. Praise God. Oh, but we only had one bathroom. And, uh, and we, we had three girls and three boys. So, you know, boys didn't care if we used a bathtub anyhow. And uh, we just go out and take a swim in the pond, you know. 
and I, as I was sharing, you know, as moms always told the sons, make sure you change your underwear. You might be an accident. You know, that tells you a little bit there. And uh, and they were diligent in their labor. And, and I'm going to move on down through this. She was dedicated to godly speech in chapter two, verse 10, it says she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should Take notice of me since I'm a what? A foreigner. She couldn't believe that Boaz took and showed favor to her. Because if you read the whole story, you have to read the book of Ruth. Find out that he started telling the guys, hey, you leave a little bit more for her. Leave a little more of that grain standing over here. And then one time he actually said, here, just open up your basket, basically, and I'll pour some grain in. And Boaz is going to become her kinsman redeemer. A picture of what Jesus Christ did for us. He will purchase her kind of like and he will become her husband, but he becomes her redeemer from a family being a, a distant family member of Naomi. So anyhow, uh, but she speaks graciously to him. And uh, she uh, uh, and that's what it says also in Proverbs 31, 26. It says she opens her mouth with wisdom and uh, Thank God for moms that were wise and they could sometimes mend fences between moms and kids and also moms and neighbors <laughs> and moms and other family members. Because uh, dads, I, I, I'm taking most of the time that dads, you know, sometimes just said it like it is and they should have not said anything. <laughs> My dad was that way. Uh, he uh, was very opinionated. And if you didn't agree with his opinion, he'd just punch you in the nose. You know, that's just the kind of guy he was. And mom was always the one to try to promote peace. Praise God that she tried. And uh, not that it always worked. <coughs> she was dependent on God. As I finish these down, Ruth 2, 12. Says the Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. And uh, we know the P31 woman in Proverbs uh, chapter 31, verse 25, the second part says she shall rejoice in time to come. And I'm going to get the right, right one here. Yeah. And and then verse 30, it says charm is deceitful and beautiful in passing. But the woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Our memory verse. And uh, she was very dependent upon God. Remember for a while, Naomi even bitter at God. She said that she was not happy with God because she moved to a place. And uh, you really you know what the problem was? They should have never moved in the first place. But God brought blessing out of that, even though there was a famine. Uh, but anyhow, uh, next one, uh, Ruth 3.3 3, uh, tells us that she dressed with care. Now, this is kind of a unique romantic situation. <laughs> she talks to Naomi about what do I do to uh, win Boaz over? And she tells her, you get all dressed up nice, put on your best perfume, and at night slip in, lift up the cover and lay by his feet. There you go, ladies. That's how you get your man. <laughs> I told you it's different. But it worked out, you know. <laughs> she put on her best apparel and she uh, went and, and she did exactly like Naomi said. And, and, when he, and she was trying to be discreet about this whole thing. She wasn't chasing after him. And, uh, uh, but uh, it worked out. And in Proverbs 31, it tells about the P31 woman in verses 11 and 12. We already read that one. Um, but in verse 23, it said, her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. And I got the wrong one there. Proverbs 31, verse 22. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. She made nice clothes for herself. And, you know, my mom, this was the hardest thing for my mom to ever buy something nice for herself. And I told you, we used to buy her Mother's Day gifts. And I'd say, Mom, where's your plates? We bought her a set of dishes. She said, so I got those in the, in the bed, bedroom under the bed. She said, I'm saving those. I don't want them to get broke. 
I said, Mom, I bought those so you can use them. But she was that kind of way. She, she wouldn't buy an expensive pair of shoes. She'd buy a cheap pair of shoes so there's money left over to pay for someone else's expensive pair of shoes. That's just the kind of person she was. But now, I told you a little while back, she says, I went to the store and I bought two dresses. I've never seen my mom in a dress to ever speak of. Uh, why, mom, did you? She says, well, they were on sale and they look really nice. She says, I don't know if I'll wear them or not. <laughs> Great, mom. Go ahead. Uh, she, she just thinks, you know, I can buy these for myself now. There's no one else involved here. And, uh, and my dad's not dictating those things. And, and he was, I told you, strong in personality, and he kind of dictated. I told you uh, she wanted tall toilets. You know, the older we get, we like tall toilets. I go to some of those stores and sit on the toilet and think I'm squatting in a hole. I said, man, what happened to those things? Where's the rest of that toilet? It's like the one that was in this little room right over here. I put a big one in there, too. But my dad says this. This was his thinking. There's nothing wrong with our toilets. They work. They flush. Why would I buy a new toilet? So my dad passed. Guess what? I put in two tall toilets. <laughs> that was just one thing she wanted. And uh, so I bought those toilets and took them up to her and put her in for them. Uh, but uh, anyhow, uh, she was discreet with me and my mom. You know, never thought about. I, I never saw my mom as a flirter or like that a kind of person and she was discreet in her clothing and I think that we need to still pass some of that on to our generations today uh, like I said I watch people and I go to Walmart you should never watch people when you go to Walmart <laughs> clothing is amazing and the minute it hits 70 degrees one time most of the clothing disappears <laughs> and these people wear all these clothes that one size fits all it does not and I told you my son's famous saying, Dad, I did not need to see that. <laughs> Whenever I see that, I'm going, I did not need to see that. And anyhow, uh, she's discreet. And she delivered blessings like I shared in Ruth chapter 4. And so I get down through here and you can go home before. And then, oh, you should be taking all your wives out and you all be going out to eat. You shouldn't have to cook. Uh, <laughs> except for Tom. <laughs> We'll read about his obituary next week. <laughs> Sunday paper, right down there. Okay. He was a blessed husband. Emphasis on was. <laughs> He's smart, too. And then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative, and may his name be famous in Israel. And through... That line, we were all blessed. Proverbs, again, our memory verse, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. And even verse 28 says, the children will rise up and call her what? Blessed. And uh, one of the biggest things that I've heard from people that work with criminals People have broke the law, let's put it that way. They often see that they restore the relationship with who? Their mother. Of course, we know our goal is with the Lord first, but with their mother. Uh, usually there's a break in relationship there that causes lots of issues. And uh, uh, so her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also. So now, since we uh, uh, want to finish up and let you get home, we're going to sing a wonderful song that someone picked. And uh, uh, like I said, I, I, I picked this with the thought of we won't be long and we'll see those moms in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know Sue's waiting for Sue Hicks didn't say anything, but I know she loved her mama. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, miss her every day. <laughs> yep, I, I know. I know that, sister. And so I, that's why I picked this song, because one day, guess what? Maybe by next weekend, Ron. Ron's thinking the Lord's coming by next weekend. And uh, I hope he's right. He didn't say what day. Weekend could be one of those days. But I pray 
that it is, then we'll get to see our mama. And we'll get to see Marilyn. I'll get to see her in young form, I believe. Uh, I, I didn't know her when she was real young. And uh, I can't wait to see her because I, I, I just got to see what she's been doing to Greg all this time. And, uh, and I, I don't know your dad. I met your dad one time. And uh, uh, I did some work here and your dad gave me a check. And because uh, <laughs> he used to be our treasurer that Marianne is now. And so uh, uh, I'll get to meet all them and I'll get to meet all your mothers. And I'll get the one that had, had Linda. Man, I'm not going to talk to her. 